Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books. It's Saturday here, but I'm gonna do a Friday read because I'm committed to wrapping up these books weekly this month so that they just don't get out of hand in my mental space, you know what I mean? So, uh, this is an interesting wrap up because it's full of three star reads. So, you know I don't bother rating my books, but if I did, these would, mostly be three-star reads. Um, and I know there's some debate about what is a three-star read. So normally in my mind, they're all four stars and the really great ones are five stars. Um, but if there's something wrong with the book, I usually give it a three-star. And I actually did read a two-star recently, but I can't talk about that. Um, <laughs> however, these books, yeah, there, there's something a little bit off about each one. So they're fine. Like even a four star that I didn't particularly love, but I could see other people enjoying it. I would still consider it a four star, but these, there are things like I just wouldn't recommend them really for the most part. Let me just get on with it. <laughs> Anyway, so the first one is The Dinosaur Artist, Obsession Science and the Global Quest for Fossils by Paige Williams. So this was a disappointment because I really like um, adventure nonfiction and um, that like true crime aspect in nonfiction. I really get off on that too, but this was just... <sighs> So the main thing that annoyed me was that she went into excruciating detail of things that I didn't really care for. And the reason I was coming to the book, I didn't really care for it. So she had this nervous like writing tick that she described everyone's outfit right down to their accessories every time. And it just didn't set the stage for me. <laughs> and I feel like the kind of people that are coming to a book to read about fossils and paleontology and the quest for these extinct beasts are not really the kind of people who are really concerned about what people are wearing, especially what their daughters are wearing to their two-year-old birthday party kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah. We want more, more of the dinosaurs, please. So it just, it just made the, the, the work drag for me. So there were some bits that were definitely interesting, but I had to do that skim read thing to get to them. So that definitely took it down a notch. So then, um, The Architect's Apprentice by Elif Shafak. This one is set back in the day. I think it was like 1500s. I'm not sure. Sorry. I'm so terrible with, you know, geography and dates and things, but this is um, like, an, again, this one was a big disappointment for me. So it was supposed to be this focus. Uh, there were some bits about di the different religions and cultures like coming together. And I find that really fascinating. And I just read her 10 minutes, 38 seconds and loved it. I found it just magical from the first page, her storytelling skills. So I expected Elif Shafak to be a new favorite author. And I think she still can be, but this book just, it, it bored me. And I don't know why it's, it's about um, a boy, I think from India who ends up in um, Istanbul and caring for this this elephant who is going to the Sultan but um, in the course of his adventures he becomes an architect's apprentice so 
I mean, it definitely should have been a book that interest me, interested me, but I just, it, it never did. It just, again, I got to the point halfway through where I was just like, I think I was listening to it on audio and I turned it up to double speed so that I could just get through it because, I mean, I wanted to finish, but I just, yeah. To be quite honest, I think elephants are not the animal for me. Um, unpopular opinion. Dumbo, oh my goodness, like that movie traumatizes me as an adult and bores me, it's depressing, like why? Um, but animals are great, like elephants are great beasts, but I don't know, I don't know. But that book disappointed me, that's what I'm saying here. Okay, and then I read, when I was a child, I read books by Marilyn Robinson. So this is the author of Gilead, um, Gilead and Lila, and what was the third one? The fourth one's coming out this fall, Jack. I'm so excited. Brilliant, brilliant author. Just like one of the greats highly recommend Gilead. That's the place to start with her. This book is an essay collection and it's kind of written as the intersection between um, religious thoughts and politics in the current time, um, society. It is really high level thinking. So this is probably one of the more advanced texts that I have read um, since being on booktube, quite honestly, uh, which I wasn't expecting based on the title. Uh, but yeah, it was really good, but it was something that I'm going to need to read again to really absorb it all. Um, you know, kind of one of those that you, you read through it and you pick up the themes and some shining moments of inspiration, but you need to read it again to really do a deep dive, that, that kind of work. And then I just finished Song of the Crimson Flower by Julie C. Dow. Uh, I kind of thought that this was going to be fantasy, a YA fantasy. And I guess it sort of was, but it was more of kind of a Chinese tale. So just really um, just a straight story with a little bit of magical realism. There's a river witch. So that kind of thing. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was sweet. If uh, you've heard of the Poppy Wars, it's a similar theme, but this one is so much more genteel. So suitable for a younger um, reader or one who doesn't like all of that hard-hitting stuff. So yeah, you've got a, a boy and a girl and a lover's triangle, um, the river witch, as I mentioned, an, an evil queen in the far off gray city, um, groups coming together to um, fight against her tyranny kind of thing. And the poppies, we all know what that means. Uh, I thought it was going to be fantasy because I read her uh, first duology that I really loved. And this one actually read like it might have been her first novel and got published after the other two were successful, if you see where I'm going here. Um, it just read as very amateurish and overly sweet, so um, simple, very simple, which was fine. I was listening to this one on audio as we were visiting the different state parks, so it actually was the perfect book for the moment that I could kind of listen to and not have to focus on too much as I was driving, and it was entertaining enough, but you know, it was a very much a younger read. Um, and that's, that's it, but that's pretty good for a week, I think. Uh, right now, things are on the uphill trajectory. I am 
well, I'm reading um, Courtney Milan's the next one in her series, the Brother Sinister series, and unfortunately, these two main characters do not yet have any chemistry whatsoever. Uh, luckily, there's a younger sister, and she's met um, a man from India who's studying it one of those local universe, prestigious universities in the UK. Um, and they have like instant chemistry. So there's that, <laughs> there's that one. And then I am reading The Orchid Thief, A True Story of Beauty and Obsession by Susan Orlean. I'm buddy reading this with Heidi and it is pairing with um, Song of Crimson Flower for my summer school readathon, the nonfiction fiction pairing. And this is fabulous. I've heard so many people recommend this over the last two or three years. And it's living up to the hype and living up to my expectations. This is a man who is, you know, going to court for illegally taking um, orchids from the National Forest in Florida, South Florida. And so some of his prior adventures and a looking look back into the history of the orchids in society and a little bit of the biology of the orchids and you know this is this is what I love and the kind of story I wanted when I picked this one up so very much satisfied with this one and I will keep you posted and then this morning I have barely started uh, our Women on the Ground Essays by Arab Women Reporting from the Arab World. Uh, this has a foreword by Christiane Amanpour and edited by Zara Hankir. And um, yeah, I've only read a few, 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 few pages, but I think it's going to be fabulous. These are different essays, a collection from actually female women reporters in different countries in the, the Arab speaking world and comes highly recommended from Kendra Winchester at The Reading Woman. So yay, I'm hoping to finish this up this month, which this month is dwindling, is it not? So yeah, that is my Friday reads on a Saturday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye.